What's up YouTube, Jeff back into another exciting Samsung video for you guys. And today we're gonna to be talking about Galaxy AI versus Apple Intelligence. Apple just launched Apple Intelligence in the iOS 18.1 developer beta, which I am now running on my iPhone 15 Pro over here. And I have, of course, Galaxy Eye on One UI 6.1.1 running on the Galaxy Z Fold 6. So I thought I'd compare these side by side. I also have some notes here about what Apple did with the Apple Intelligence that they have now running inside iOS 18.1.1. So I wanna kind of go line by line through here, and then I'll point out some of the key differences between the two. Um, now this is not a final version, of course, that Apple has in iOS 18.1. It is a preliminary version, and so there are some features that are not working, and I'll mention that at the end. So if we go through here one by one, and look at Galaxy Eye, and I'll kind of talk about how each of the Galaxy Eye features, which are of course more mature, because One UI 6.1.1 is in stable, and also Galaxy Eye has been around since the announcement of the S24 Ultra back in January, so it's been a while. So Call Assist, of course, allows you to basically get real-time translation, and of course you've also got Bixby Text Call, which you go into the settings over here on phone, you can find Bixby Text Call at the top, which will allow Bixby to take your calls and kind of screen them for you. Now, Apple Intelligence in iOS 18.1, what you can do is you can actually record calls. You don't have the live translation or the Bixby text call where AI will actually answer it for you, but we do have a feature that's missing on the Galaxy phone in the US. We don't have native call recorder. Over here, if you do call, I'm calling UPS here, in the top left corner you see this little icon that looks like a little transcription. It's going to say this call will be recorded when they answer to let them know to comply with US laws and regulations. This is one of the reasons Samsung has not done this, I believe. And then you can also take notes on the call up here. At the end, when the call's over, it also gives you ability to summarize the call and get a full transcription. So when I end this, it's gonna show me the call as a pop-up, and it'll give me the ability to go in there and get a summary of the call. Of course, I can listen to it, do whatever else it is that I wanna do with this particular call. Now I will tell you, the summary is not exactly perfect in iOS 18.1.1. Uh, sorry, 18.1, but it is better than having no native call recorder, which we don't have on the Galaxy phones. So it does take some time, it's slow, but it is better than having no call recorder. As you can see here in the US, we do not have that. It is available, of course, around the rest of the world, but I would like to see Samsung work within the US regulations, maybe play a little notice like Apple did here to kind of get around that issue um, that we have here in the US and give us that call recorder. I think everybody would really like to have that. So that's the first thing here at the top that I wanted to mention. If we go down here, chat assist, translate messages and select chat and text messages app, compose full text based on a snippet or request you've written, change your writing style and get grammar suggestions. So the writing assistant, that is also available now already inside Apple Intelligence. And the way this basically works, uh, let me just do this behind the camera here because I showed this off in a tweet earlier, but I have my uh, X, my Twitter, is locked behind Face ID because that's a new iOS feature. So if you go here and you take a look here, this is what I typed. I said, man, iOS 18.1 really sucks. I wish I was using my Galaxy S24 Ultra right now. If you highlight the text at the bottom, you can go ahead and translate it to different styles. I did professional in this case. It doesn't do a good job of keeping the original intent, maybe because I was being a little rude about iOS 18.1, I don't know, but it says the release of iOS 18.1 has been met with disappointment, particularly among users who prefer the Galaxy S24 Ultra. So Chat Assist does a very similar thing here. It's actually got almost the same features, chat translation. I don't think Apple Intelligence supports that yet. Composer style grammar, suggested replies. That will do all of that over here. You can do all of that in the same menu. And it's the same idea. You just highlight the text and then you're good to go. So these are very similar features, um, and I might do a full video kind of comparing their accuracy. I didn't wanna make that this video because then the video will be like 45 minutes, but I do think that this one is a little bit less the true intent of what I was writing versus what I've seen using Galaxy AI's chat assist over time, but that's just my personal opinion. And again, since I was being derogatory towards Apple software, maybe that had something to do with it uh, for sure. Uh, interpreter, this is something that's not really available yet um, in the Galaxy, uh, sorry, Apple Intelligence. Here you can tap to talk for conversation mode and uh, this will allow you to basically interpret a conversation with someone who speaks another language. This works great with the fold because you can have you know one person's text on one side, one on the other, 
and you can kind of see the conversation back and forth. The Fold is perfectly made for this device. Um, there's nothing like that in Apple Intelligence just yet. Uh, note Assist, so auto format, summarize, spell check your notes, things like that. This can also be done now um, inside of the Apple Intelligence menu. You can get summaries of various notes and things like that. And you can also do this inside Mail, which of course Galaxy Eye lets you do as well. So if you open the stock Notes app, or if you open the stock Mail app, there's a couple of different options for summarizing. Now I don't use Mail inside of uh, Apple's Mail app on my iPhone, but there is this Summarize button now at the top. It didn't really summarize any of my messages, but they're very old and they're not messages that are probably very easy to summarize for context but that is something that I noticed that it struggled to do when I was trying to test it earlier. If I search for notes, let me open notes really quick. You can see down here, I have some notes from our podcast editing here and where I was gonna do kind of the insertion of various things. Uh, up here, you can see there's a lot of things you can look at, including some of the things they added with math results and things like that, recent notes, lines and grids. And then here, if you kind of highlight you know, the text, if you highlight the text, you can still use writing tools, you know, look up, search web, translate, all that kind of stuff. So it does do translation if you just highlight a piece of text, but not in the same way that Samsung's Galaxy Eye works as I was showing earlier. So the Note Assist does work. It's very similar, um, although I think right now the Samsung one has more robust features. Uh, you can do some really cool stuff in Apple's Notes application, and the addition of Galaxy Eye is certainly welcome, I think, for everybody who uses this app particularly the summarization and all that kind of stuff is gonna be very useful for everyone. You can also do this in dictation mode, which Samsung also allows you to do. In fact, that was the next thing I was gonna mention here, transcript assist. If you take a voice note, it'll go ahead and transcribe it for you. You can summarize your transcripts. This is a really great feature, and that also is working now inside of Apple Intelligence. So they both have these features. These are fairly basic features that I think, in the end, you know, Jim and I and Google, when the Pixel rolls out, Pixel 9 Pro, all phones are probably going to have these kind of basic AI features that are specific to their OEM and they might have slightly different variations, but they're all going to be very useful features that should be there on pretty much any flagship phone in 2024. Uh, browsing Assist, get simple summaries of web pages along with text. This is one that is also in the iPhone. So if you go to Safari, and I was testing this, you do have to go to the internet, Samsung internet, not Chrome as far as I know. But if you go to Samsung Internet and you go to Sammy Guru, let's go to my website, and you find an article, I found this one over here, I'll go to the same one on the right. If you do that here, if you go to reader mode, you do have to go in reader mode, you can then get a full summary by tapping on summarize. And then over here, of course, you can also do the same thing by tapping the Galaxy Eye button, summarize or translate over here. And you can see Galaxy Eye is a lot faster I don't know, this is not even really fully working. As you guys can see, like it doesn't, it doesn't look like it, uh, doesn't like it fully worked. It's so weird. I have not seen it work very well. Let's try it again. Still thinking. You saw the Samsung AI is a lot faster. I did want to show a couple of comparisons, so you can definitely see that. Also, you have a really easy copy right here really quickly. Translate if you need it as well. So Samsung's AI is definitely more mature and definitely a lot faster. This is running in beta, as I said. So they both have the option, but some of the ones in iOS 18.1 are not working. This one obviously doesn't work very well because it worked fine uh, over on the Samsung phone. Didn't really work here. So that's just one that we'll have to, I guess, skip. But it does make sense uh, to me that since it's in beta, it would be struggling a little bit. Uh, in that instance. The next one is Photo Assist. So a lot of these features are not available in the iOS 18.1 developer beta for Apple Intelligence. If you look through here, you won't find anything really about photos uh, in terms of filling in the background. This is like, you know, Portrait Studio, you get different styles. That's not available. That is supposed to be coming, some of these photo manipulation features, but that won't come till this fall uh, on the iPhone. But what you do have in here now if you go into the stock photos app though on the iPhone, what you do have now is the ability to search in natural language. Find a picture of Jeff wearing a green shirt. So theoretically, you should be able to do things like this and it should work. Uh, I've had some issues getting it to work again, beta and all that, but that's supposed to work now. You're supposed to be able to create a movie moment really quickly just by using spoken word. 
it seems to be kind of hit or miss, so Apple still has some fine tuning to do there for what for real. Um, drawing assist, which is something I've talked about before on the Galaxy phones, this doesn't exist anywhere on the iPhone, of course, because it doesn't have the S Pen, but uh, you can use sketched image, which will allow you to take a photo that you have and kind of draw something, and then you can get that exact object rendered by AI. I did a full video on the Galaxy Z Fold 6 where I talked a little bit about this. Nothing like this currently exists on the iPhone. Probably never will because they don't have access to the S Pen, and it seems like Apple is never going to bring an S Pen to the iPhone. They don't seem interested in doing that. Uh, photo, photo ambient wallpaper. Apple doesn't really have anything like this, although they do have some cool wallpaper features. This adapts to the uh, weather conditions. Health Assist as well. Uh, Apple announced at the developer conference some things would be coming, but there's nothing yet that's in the iOS 18.1 developer beta. So let's see what things I might have forgotten here. Um, the new Siri, let's talk a little bit about the new Siri. So the new Siri, which you can double tap at the bottom to type. I mean, I also have that ability with One Hand Operation Plus. I can bring Bixby up anytime I want down here. And I can also, once I see Bixby, I can type to Bixby if I'm interested right here. I have that set to a One Hand Operation Plus shortcut. You can do this with Siri over here. Uh, the other thing is there's a cool animation now. So if you hold down the side button, you get this little animation around the outside of the screen, all these different colors, which looks really cool. But they actually lifted this, or maybe they, you know, we always say that one company is copying the other, but maybe they were developing them in tandem. Samsung's new Smart Select, look how it highlights around the outside. This lets you crop part of your, you know, your home screen and kind of learn something about it. You can also use sketched image from there. Take this and, you know, draw a person and then generate. Uh, my sketched image skills are terrible, but you can do that directly. Let's see what it does just for fun. I'll leave that in the video. People can make fun of my artistry. Anyway, those two features, and you can see it adds a little person standing right there, which is kind of interesting. Um, so definitely a lot of things that Apple needs to clean up there, but the Siri animation is cool. I don't think this is really the new Siri, uh, as I talked about before. This seems like just the old Siri with the new animation, not like a lot smarter in my testing so far, but uh, it does the basic stuff well, it just doesn't keep up with like traditional like conversation as well as it's supposed to. Uh, we talked about mail summarization, transcription and notes, Safari, uh, smart message replies, we talked about that, um, natural language search and photos. Now focus mode in intelligent interruptions, I wanna talk about this because I'd really love to see Samsung implement this. So if you go into you know your modes and routines over here and we go into focus modes over here, the focus mode over here now allows you to have reduce interruptions use AI to intelligently determine when an interruption should be allowed. Samsung should definitely implement this. Uh, Galaxy Eye is not yet implemented in this particular way. You kind of have to set it up you know, manually. It'd be really nice if AI could use this to figure out exactly when. Now, Samsung does have the customization service, which uses some information to kind of decide on things in terms of sleep patterns and activities and significant places. Um, to determine to auto starters, you know, start routines, but it's not using everything it's learned. It's not really having Galaxy Eye built in. Customization service has been around for a while, not officially part of Galaxy Eye, although it does do this, you know, to a lesser degree. So I'd love to see them officially incorporate Galaxy Eye uh, in there as well. The last thing I want to mention, a couple of things that are coming later this year um, to Apple Intelligence that are not there now. Genmoji Siri 2.0, I don't think that's in here. I think this is just the old Siri with a new coat of paint. For now, it still seems about the same speed, makes some errors, not as good at natural language conversation. Chat GPT integrations coming to the iPhone, which of course, that'd be huge if Samsung could get that as well, um, but that's not here yet on uh, iOS 18.1 either. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this kind of rundown of what's in each of the Galaxy Eye versus Apple intelligence. I think this is a battle that's gonna play out over many years. Obviously, this is an early look at Apple's first you know, attempt at any part of those features on iOS 18.1, so to be fair, they shouldn't necessarily be where Samsung is, but Samsung is a little bit ahead of them right now, I think. When the full version comes out in October, I'll do a follow-up. Let me know what you guys think below. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notifications. If you guys want a free mystery box with your next Samsung phone purchase, check out our website, samiguru.com, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.